Okay, I'm ready. Hello, <laughs> my name is Riley. I am a third year medical student now. If you're new here, I make some videos very occasionally about med school. I've been creating a list of things that I wanted to share with you guys that are about to start med school or maybe you're already in your first year and you just need a little bit of direction, a little bit of tip from a senior who's been in the game for a minute. I'm gonna cover four things that I personally wish I knew more about starting medical school and that's step one, being pass fail. What does that mean and what do I do differently? Two is Anki, three is research. Where do I find it and how much do I need? And four is something that I'll share with you guys at the end of this video. So step one, you probably heard by now it's pass fail. Before you had a numerical grade for your step one exam and that numerical grade had a big impact on your residency application. The data really isn't out there because the first class for step one to go pass fail hasn't graduated yet, they're the class above us, but what I've heard from a lot of programs is that they're just gonna end up using step two as the numerical grade. So my advice is obviously you want to study as much as you can and learn as much as you can for step one because for step two you're gonna need basically all of that background knowledge that you learn to answer step two questions. But also at the same time, don't stress about learning every single minute little detail that you need to know for step one, since once again, you're either gonna get a pass or a fail. And now you can use that extra time during your first and second year to do leadership activities, do volunteer work, and do research, which I'll talk about in a second. So basically, now you have more time to do other forms of work, so. Number two is Anki. If you have watched my latest video on how to set up your Anki remote, which by the way, it kind of popped off a little bit. Anki is essentially flashcards. That's all I'm gonna say about that because I could just go into a can of worms. I would advise everyone to at least download it and try to learn it and see if it works for you. If not, don't use it. It's like any other resource. It doesn't work for everyone. It might work for you and Anki might be the only thing you use. I have some friends that are like that. They solely use Anki and UWorld questions. I did not use Anki that much. I used it for Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. So if it doesn't work for you, it's totally okay. But I definitely had to use it for certain classes where a lot of the material was just blunt memorization. So my advice is try to figure out how to use it if you want to at the start of medical school and then decide if you want to use it or not once you try it out and it's not a big deal if you don't use it so this is something that I know cause a lot of students anxiety and just stress throughout med school and it's research here is my super short guide on how to find research the most ideal situation would be that you have an org at your school for let's say you're interested in ophthalmology join that org and they'll have opportunities for research. But if that isn't the case for you, you're gonna have to stop relying on your school and start branching out. Just, you gotta go. You gotta go your own way. Go and make a med Twitter. I don't really like putting myself out there. Put yourself out there. Med Twitter is basically a resume, I like to say. Oh, I got some bars today. Oh, you make a Twitter with your headshot and you follow other med students, medical schools, residencies, residents, whoever you're interested in, whatever you're interested in, maybe a meme page here and there, and you post what you do throughout med school. Even if it's like something small, like, oh, I just took step one today. It's essentially your resume, but a more fun way to look at it for programs. <laughs> and they're going to look at it. If you make your med Twitter right now as a first year student, you will be so ahead of the game. Another reason why I recommend it is I found so many people putting opportunities out there for students and you won't see that unless you're on med Twitter. I don't know why I'm getting angry right now. Why am I angry? Don't worry if you don't have followers in the beginning. It really does not matter. If you want a follower, let me know. I will follow you. <laughs> but that is not the point of Twitter, okay? It's not your social media. It is your resume, okay? So we're still on the topic of research. Twitter is an easy way to find research. That is 
that was all I was going at. Another way to find research is go to conferences. Whenever I was starting med school, I thought conferences were something that you just go to if you had a presentation or like a poster or something that you're doing at that conference. My one little tiny cogwheel in my head started turning whenever I switched from that mindset into thinking that conferences are a learning opportunity for you to go and explore whatever specialty it is. Most of these conferences have some type of student section and doctors that want to help students will present at those conferences and it's such an easy way to get connected to mentors and other students who you can ask for guidance. If you don't know where to start at all, go on Reddit and look up what conferences are there for ophthalmology or ob or radiology, whatever, and make a list of it. And you can also see on your Twitter, because you made it by now, people posting about upcoming conferences. And if the deadline's not over, a lot of the times, the conference will have some sort of student stipend for scholarships that you can apply to, where they will literally cover whatever you need to go to that conference. <laughs> make a list and have the dates already like mapped out and whenever the time comes around, see if there's any scholarships going on and go from there. And don't be afraid to go if you have no reason to go other than you just wanna go to the conference. So I had absolutely no business going to, for example, SIR this year, which is like the biggest IR conference in the US, I think, I don't know. Why am I making up facts? But that's the biggest one I've been to. But I ended up meeting other students. I met mentors there. It was such a easy way to make connections and meet people that you probably otherwise would never meet. So those are my two biggest tips for finding research. Met Twitter and go to conferences. And my final tip, this is my favorite tip. So don't be disappointed. A lot of med students are already anxious. It's a personality trait that helped you get to where you are today, okay? And unfortunately, med school doesn't do a great job of making those anxieties go away. There's going to be a lot of times where you feel like there's so much going on and you always want to do 110 things on your to-do list. And there's going to be a lot of blanks on your resume that you're gonna be worried and anxious about until basically the end of med school. I tend to find myself seeking peace with future events like, okay, I'm going to finally be at peace or be less anxious once I get this done, once I have this many research projects done, once I'm in residency. That is not going to cause you any happiness whatsoever because no matter what point in time you are, no matter once you're in residency or once you're a doctor, you're always going to have a to-do list that's not checked off. What I realize helps is trying to find a way to find peace with the current state that I'm in right now. I try to tell myself, Riley, enjoy being a medical student with all the stress and everything in between because there was a day where I was studying for my MCAT hoping that I will find peace once I'm a medical student. Think about everything that you've accomplished to get to where you are today. Take a deep breath, enjoy the process, and enjoy being in medical school. That is all the advice that I have for now. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know because I will make a part two. I am full of wisdom. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys around.